Welcome to the Christian Board Gamers Podcast, where we focus on Jesus, community, and board games. Let's have some fun. What is up, everyone? My name is Joe Bragg. Thank you for listening to the Christian Board Gamers Podcast. I'm joined, as always, by my dear brother, Ray. We are excited to chat about Jesus, the Bible, Christian living, board games, and life in general. There is no telling where we might go. Ray, I got a question for you. When is the last time you've had Pop Rocks? Pop Rocks? Wow. Oh, man. Bringing back. The memories, boy. Yeah, when's the last time? It probably has been, uh, I don't know, 25 years, you know? Wow. Man, it's been a long time. I haven't had Pop Rocks in a long time. That's a candy that I forgot about. Yeah, that's crazy because I actually just had two packs of Pop Rocks <laughs> just before you hopped on this call because I was like, I am tired. And I happened to have some my, my boys oh, uh, for some reason thought it would be a great idea to leave them on my game table or something. Yep. I don't know. But all I know is packets. It was of, a gift. They weren't even like Pop Rocks, though. They were like like imitation Pop Rocks. I don't even know what they're – I don't remember what they're called, but I threw the package away. Mm, pop but I'm going to tell you. Yeah, right. <laughs> pop Pebbles. Pop uh, Pebbles, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need a mark. I don't, that. <laughs> pop pebbles <laughs> yeah um <laughs> here's the thing though like honestly they hit bro like this is why oh, i'm yeah. asking because i was like dude i don't remember these things being as good as they were i, I need to check it, it out <laughs> yeah it's like you feel the popping like in the back of your nose yeah. and stuff it like yeah. it just illuminated senses that i had not illuminated in a while yeah and i was I just pro- curious yeah. Yeah. I'm going to look into it, man, because I might, I might get some and be like, wow, all these memories just flood back through. Right. And I'm, you know, just, wow. Yeah, man. I haven't thought about it. All right. Pop yeah, Pebbles yeah. on my Christmas list. <laughs> Pop pebbles, let's go. Yeah, well, that's the thing, though, because I was like, man, like you said, I'm a little tired, been a long day. I was like, I'm a little tired, yeah. too. I was like, you know what? You know what I need? Clearly, <laughs> I just need this sugar that's going to explode in my yes. mouth. It's yeah, going to be yes. fantastic. Do you remember and obviously the- it worked. The the urban legend surrounding Pop Rocks that if you had a a thing of Pop Rocks and drank like a like Sprite soda. or something, yeah. you, your your stomach would explode. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wonder yeah. how many people actually tried that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, there's probably if we go back way in the archives, there's like hospital visits of like yeah. you'd be like, well, I took a whole bunch of Pop Rocks and I took a Sprite and I chugged it with the Pop yep. Rocks and now I'm here. <laughs> like, I don't know. But yes, I do remember that. And obviously yeah. the whole Mentos and pop thing and all that. Yes, I yes, said, yes. yeah, like, no, nah, that stuff's crazy. But it is great to be here. Uh, it's, you know, I wanted to throw something random in the in the beginning there because I just was like, man, I have not had pop rocks in forever. And I, I don't like know it. anyone else who's eating them. So I like it. So how are you doing, though? Are you good? Yeah, I'm fantastic, man. I'm fantastic. You know, you know what I'm gonna say, Joe. I'm as, I'm <laughs> I excited as always, man. I I, it, it, does, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, I could be like woke up out of a a nap, a, a mm-hmm. late night nap, because we record these late night, and be <laughs> groggy, can't even see, make my way to the computer, and then all of a sudden, yeah. boop, here we go. It's game time, man. Yeah. I, and I get I get the energy, I get excited, and I'm ready to go. You know what my favorite part about that sentence is that demonstrates we're getting older is you said that we record this late night. It's nine o'clock on the East Coast. Like, I mean, we're in the West. I mean, we're yeah. not in the West. Excuse me. We're in the Midwest. We're yeah, here in the Midwest, middle, and it's Midwest. nine o'clock. But but in, it's winter time, and, like, and it gets it gets dark at four thirty. So it's been. No. It feels like it's midnight. <laughs> No, man, we were on the East Coast not too long ago, and uh, because that's where I'm from, and my boys were like, Dad, it's four, and it's like, oh, like, they're like, it's so dark out, and I was like, yeah, I know, it gets that time for bed early here. Get your jammies on. Yeah, you're like, why? It's 3.30. You're like, I feel like the day's over, you know, but at least out here, we get until like, what, five or so, five, five, fifteen, thirty, somewhere in that range, but yeah, it does make for longer days. Well, uh, either way, I'm glad that you're excited, glad to be here. We do have some sponsors as we've been dropping here. So this episode is sponsored in part by Living Water Gaming. Their mission is to be the one-stop shop for Christian games and gaming accessories. Visit livingwatergaming.com to learn more. That's livingwatergaming.com. And we are also sponsored by Refocus Creative. This is Resourceful Video Marketing Solutions. Refocus Creative offers high-quality professional video production services for any of your business marketing needs. 
you can contact them at info at refocuscreative.com. That's info at refocuscreative.com to schedule a free chat and discuss your media needs. So huge thank you to our sponsors. We are thrilled to have them on board. And yes. in other news, we've been talking about this since day one of the podcast, but the Game Changer Board Gaming Retreat, which is April 5th through the 7th at Camp Living Waters in Luther, Michigan. It's going to be a fantastic weekend filled with gaming, praise and worship, prayer, messages. We're super excited. Registration is officially open. People are registering. This is fantastic. I'm pumped. And uh, yeah, it's so cool. And so you can learn more and register at camplivingwaters.org slash game dash changer. That's camplivingwaters.org slash game dash changer. Again, that's one of my favorite URLs to say, but we want to get started. (laughs) You know what time it is. So we want to keep this uh, a little bit brief, but we want to talk about some games that we've been playing uh, here. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I uh, I broke out two games that I've wanted to play for a while and got them to the table, uh, learned them with my wife, and then have played them in a couple of different settings here. And that first one is After Us, and then the okay. second one is this game called Furnace. And uh, so After Us it is exactly what it sounds like, right? So it's a post-apocalyptic uh, and you have these varying um, ape tribes that are now um, going in and essentially establishing a hierarchy in the world and which which tribe is going to be the tribe. So if you think hmm. like the Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's movies, exactly what right? I thought about. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's what this is. Right. But the mechanics are super sweet. So a lot of this is happening in like simultur- simultaneous turns. So you're not taking like a, a turn order. It's everyone's doing it together mm-hmm. through phases. Mm-hmm. So um, it's a deck builder but it's a very unique deck builder not what we've kind of found as we've played it is not like some of the typical rules that you would think of in deck building don't necessarily apply here like you can you can remove cards from your deck um you know like like you'd want to do in a lot of deck building games like you want to mm-hmm. trash them or discard them from yeah. your deck and you can you can do that but at the pace of play, it's really unique. It's very interesting because this is a big race. And so it's not always advantageous to do that like you might you might want to in a traditional deck builder. Uh... And people may have found a different strategy there. But what's super dope is you draw out these four cards and then it's a puzzle. And you're trying to like move your cards around so that they create these closed frames. And then for all the closed frames, you then get to like gain the resources or take these certain uh, action types and trade. Okay. And it's really, really sweet. So everyone's doing that simultaneously. And then once we've all arranged our stuff and then collected our resources and collected our intelligence, which is points. So mm. you've gained your points. It's a race to 80 essentially. Once you've done all that, we then get into this next phase where you you pick a like a, a token, and that token has a particular tribe, and and so you you pick that um you pick that token, and then everyone reveals it at the same time, and then you gain the bonus that comes with that token. But then also, if you have the resources, you can then attract another ape from that particular tribe type that you flip the token on, and huh. then they get added added to the top of your deck, and then they can come into the next round, and each one of the tribes has like a different specialty so they can gain you different types of bonuses and so you can really work it out where like you're just particularly focusing on one or two tribes to be able to get you know a particular synergy going Mm -hmm. um and like i said it's a race and so there's a lot of like uh a lot of points are gained this is not like uh it's a game where just points are flying just racks up yeah yeah and everybody's that's that's going going through it's it's actually it's a blast like i i've been really wanting to play it since Grand Con. Um, you know, I was we were sitting at a table by Sam Healy from Flipside of Board Games and he was uh he broke it out and he had uh he was just like all about it. He was like, this <laughs> is so much fun because he had just purchased it and he was like, whoa, and then he was talking about it on his channel and I was like, okay, I'm in, man. Like I want I want to give this a go. And yeah. uh did not disappoint. It was really, really fun. And uh and then the other one was Furnace, which I had wanted to play. Actually, uh, Shauna from the Christian Board Gamers Facebook group had like recommended it and it just looked neat to me. And I was like, okay, an engine builder. I really dig that. 
Yeah. So I got the game. It sat on my shelf for a little bit. And then one night I just asked, asked my wife, Stephanie, I said, can we just, can we just play this? Let's just try it. And we played it wrong the first time. Um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, we learned some things, but I realized and, and her and I, as we were playing, we we're like, Oh man, this game has a lot more depth than we initially thought. And there was just a lot of really neat mechanics. And again, this is another one of those games where you're kind of doing things simultaneously to some regard, but there's an auction function and the auction function is actually really sweet. So everyone has these different, um, numbered tokens, right? Four through one. And on your turn, you're, you're placing the, you know, the token that you want on whatever card you want. Right. Um, and then if you're playing two player, there's like a solo, um, or there's like a third player that you'd roll a die and then it would determine where they're going to put their Uh, their uh tokens. But it's like, if I played my four token, that pretty much is going to secure that spot for me because it's the highest token. I'm going to get that card. But if Stephanie places her three on my four token, Mm -hmm. there's a, there's a resource thing on the top or like a conversion thing at the top. And that means when, when we get into the next phase, she's going to collect, three of the resource or whatever because that Uh, three becomes a multiplier for what's ever on top so i get the card and i'm ultimately going to get the bonuses on the bottom but she can use it for production which Uh, there's a huge strategy in that because i can like grab that because i need like man i really need this iron because in order for my cards to really work the way i want them to i don't want to win this auction i actually want to get the resources from right 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 so you're being really strategic how you place your your tokens and and then you get to uh, rearrange everything how you want to like um trigger them so each of the factories Uh you get to kind of move around how do i want to trigger it and then what order i can do it in And, and again it's just literally a gain resource convert resource convert resources to to money which are points Okay. You don't spend money in the game. You only spend resources and money are your points. Hmm. And I'm not going to lie, man. We played it again last <laughs> night. We've played it three times now since we broke it open. It yeah, pretty is fun. a blast, man. Ah. Super fun. And again, a lot of depth that I was not expecting. And that's yeah. what I think you'll really like. Actually, I think yeah. both of these you'll really, you'll really like. So, well, well, uh, I know we want to talk about, um, what, what did we just play? Gosh, I just drew a blank. Uh, <laughs> Splendor. Splendor, yeah, gosh, yeah. I was I was gonna say solitaire, and I was like, that starts with the S, but that is definitely not the same game. <laughs> <laughs> no, Splendor, so close, though. but <laughs> I know, really, really close. Um, but uh, Splendor being a engine building game that that was really fun, and so I saying that I would like the the in in the furnace uh would be uh accurate. Um, that's what you said, it right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fur- Furnace is an engine builder like that. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, definitely, definitely I could see because uh Splendor was a lot of fun, man. I, I had a good time yeah. playing that uh when you brought that out. And uh as we got going, even though we weren't able to finish, but still seeing the mechanics the operation, how the deck or mm-hmm. not the deck, engine building worked out was really cool. And once it got going, I, I felt like, OK, I can I can really make some things happen now, you know, and you yeah. start getting a little momentum and it, it, it built like even the anticipation of my next turn, which was a lot of fun. So I do want to play that again. Yeah. And then you hope when it gets to your turn, the gems are available. Or, or, yeah, yeah cause, right. Because that gets that gets kind of kind of crazy. Um, yeah. No, I, yeah, I like Splendor. It's again, it's one of those games that's been around for a while that I just, you know, actually started playing it last year and play it a lot with with uh, my son and, and my wife. And we just really enjoy the game. But yeah, definitely it's, you know, Furnace is different, but mm-hmm. same kind of thing where you're just building that engine and you're trying to be able to crank out as much uh, conversion as you can. Yeah. And I just, yeah. I don't know. I really enjoy that kind of stuff, but our, our splendor game was actually really sweet though. We actually were playing that at the center. So we had a couple of students that, uh, actually joined us, which is really cool. Ray and I make a big push to try to get them into the board game space <laughs> and try new things. Cause they, they pretty much think Uno is the greatest game in the world, which <laughs> Uno is great. Not, not, not dogging on Uno at all, but but right. we've tried to like try to get them into some things because we want to stretch them. You know, we want mm-hmm. them to use their brain. And uh it was really neat watching them kind of pick it up. And then they were yep. like, oh, I understand what's going on now. And and then like, yeah, we need to play this again so we can actually finish a game, which was was a really neat, uh exciting thing. But honestly, yep. I was really impressed with, with what you were doing, Ray, at the table outside of the game as it related to one of the students. And uh, I think just... 
even kind of really looking at how board games can be a tool, like we've talked yep. about in discipleship yep. and evangelism. So talk a little bit about that. I thought that was really dope, actually. Yeah, I what I liked about Splinter was the pace of play that you had a little bit of time to determine uh, between moves and kind of figure out what you wanted to work for, and which gave great opportunity to be able to uh, speak to the student. And it was somebody that I've seen for a while and hadn't really got their story yet. And I just thought, man... They sat down at the table with us. This is awesome. And just using that time because uh, they kind of were a little bit distracted because, you know, saying uh, trying to pick up the game and look around. Obviously, they see other kids playing, doing other stuff. So I, I wanted to keep them engaged on the game and what we we're doing. So just using that as an opportunity to ask more about their story and background and be able to connect and tell them I appreciated them sitting down with us and playing um, was really cool. And I think that it was a great time to be able to to do that um the game allowed for that and it was light you know the game itself was wasn't too heavy where it was uh not i I was not able to talk while we were playing and uh this particular student opened up and told me some things that were pretty pretty cool to learn about you know um her backstory and felt like um that you know that just a never, another level of engagement. And like you were saying, just from before board games as a tool as a uh, discipleship and um, fellowship and, you know, just getting to know people, really breaking down those barriers, because honestly, otherwise, I don't know that I would have ever had an opportunity to sit down and have that same conversation and be able to get that same information or get you know, it, I, I don't know that that would have been created because otherwise this particular student would probably would have been off with her friends doing things and moving. And, you know, we wouldn't have been in the same space. So, yeah, it was a great, great opportunity f- for just that. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, I felt like it was masterful because because, again, I think you're right. Like this is this is a student that's usually all kind of all over the place. Definitely. Uh, hanging out with her friends a lot, you know, which is great, which is totally fine. You know, you want that, but it was kind of neat to see her even break away, sit down and play a game because it turns out she likes to play. And we asked like, Hey, yep. how, you know, what kind of games you play now? Granted, she's like, I love Monopoly. You know, we play, you know, play Candyland. Cause again, like a lot of our students don't have, have this kind of time to sit down or they, mm-hmm. or they don't with families, et cetera. And in her case, um, you know, it was even different as we learn more about her story and you're like, wow, you know, and she's like, I'm kid, kid number 10 out of 15. You're like, yeah. whoa, like, what's yeah. that like, you know, and, and just kind of hearing, hearing more of her life. Um, you know, I think it really did award a really sweet opportunity, uh, to be able to just engage and, Again, just putting into practice what we what we talk about and have been talking about in this podcast, kind of since well, I from from the get go, and really using these as tools because it was a it was able to break down walls, which I mm-hmm. think was really sweet. And she was she started opening up even more as the yeah. game went. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. I noticed that too, and it it was a. Uh... Man, that's that's right. Saying it was just interesting to learn a story. And yeah, the opportunity that being able to sit down at a table with a game and just hang out with somebody and, and just talk to them, you know, because it wasn't like forceful. It wasn't pressure. It wasn't anything like that. Just generally asking questions. I feel like you could do that with, you know, you get a group of friends together and you, hey, how are you doing? You know, where are you from? What's your background? Where are you where you got family? This and that. And you just learn stuff about people. And especially in our line of work with uh, the students and knowing that they come from broken homes and different things that they feel cared for, that they feel like, man, somebody's actually asking me about myself, who I am. And, and somebody like her who comes from a family of 15 kids where she's number 10 and doesn't know half of her siblings and, you know, in and out of foster care and stuff like, wow, somebody's actually taking time to uh ask and learn and yeah. you know you know that that's valuable and uh yeah. which again probably would never had that opportunity if we went and broke the game out right. you know so yeah, yeah it was sweet and what's what's even more awesome is is that the next time we have a game she's she's likely to already be like yeah right. play i mean if right. i brought splendor again you know which i plan on bringing again on thursday like i think she'll want to sit down at the table because yep. she was starting to really get it at the end. And and again, I think that just provides more of an opportunity. And I, I think that she'll want to invite, you know, a couple of her friends to come over and say, Hey, you should learn this. And I just think, yep. again, it's, it's amazing to me how 
you know, how simple that is, but yet how it awarded that, you know, cause it's, it's different if they're running around and you're like, Hey, tell me your story. And they're like, yeah, I'm over here doing a TikTok. Like, what yeah, are you talking exactly, about? Exactly. You know, but, but having that opportunity to bring them, you know, to, to a table and just say, Hey, we're going to sit down and play this game. You want to play? And, and when she said, yeah, I'll play, you know, and, and then, uh, and then we had another student come and join us as well. And just, just, it creates such a such a dope environment and yep. and ray another another move that i think did really well and you guys wouldn't know this that are listening unless you're in our center but ray even just had this idea to move the table where we normally played games move that table into a little bit of a different location and even that created a different feel cuz one we could see everything going around in mm-hmm. the center a lot better which was really helpful uh and and it gains a little bit more exposure cuz we had a lot of kids walking over like what are you guys doing and then we were able to be like mm-hmm. oh we're playing this game splendor whatever and just so they're seeing it they're gaining exposure and uh you know i just thought that was a also a really really neat move and so yeah we do have a unique context but again this is what drives a lot of what we're talking about because we're trying to break down you know barriers and and try to use these use these games as tools and it was and we'll do a whole episode on this but that day one of our staff members gave this incredibly powerful, oh man, incredibly powerful devotional about the games we play, and they just yes. broke down all all the different ways that games can be like spiritual metaphors. For, oh my you know, gosh, it was amazing! It was so powerful. Yeah, and so, yeah. Um, I'm excited to turn that into a complete episode. Yeah, I just really loved what she did there. Um, and it was so unexpected and it was funny because Ray and I were looking at each other across the, <laughs> across the, we have a pretty big staff and we're looking at each other across the staff table, like, yo, like, yo, we need this. Document. <laughs> yeah. We need this right here. We need this. We, we're going to put this we to like, good use. This is yes. like, yeah, she just wove Jesus yeah. and God and the spirit through all of it. Mm. And, it was uh, so good. Th- yeah. Every day and what, how winning and losing and what actually, man, it, it's, yeah, when we, when we make that into episode, I think that's going to be a great episode, very beneficial and and will be a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was not expecting it. And I, when she started talking, I'm like, what? This is dope. (laughs) So yeah, really, really, really excited about that. So yeah. And, and Ray and I are also excited because, you know, we're coming up on Christmas break and we got a whole game day plan. So we're like really pumped on that. So can't I feel like, I feel like a kid again, Joe, like waiting for Christmas morning, you know, your (laughs) anticipation of the presents under the tree and excited and like, Oh, what am I going (laughs) to, I feel like that's what this game day is, is going to be. I'm like, Oh man, this is going to be so sweet. Just board games and. And snacks and just yes. hanging out is going to be cool. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So I'm really, really pumped. We're doing like a 10 to 10. It's going to be phenomenal. Yeah. And it just dawned on me. Wow. It dawned on me right this second that uh, by the time people listen to this, like it's New Year's. Like I think this episode actually drops oh. on January 1st. So happy New Year. Oh, happy New Year. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah. You know, I probably should think through this thing. But we I'm, are yeah, in I'm, the future right now. This is yeah. great. Time travel, Joe. <laughs> Time travel. It's real. We are. It's real. Look, we look are. in the Bible. I'm just saying. It yeah, said yeah, immediately yeah. he was on the other side. It didn't say yeah, later yeah, that yeah. day. It said immediately <laughs> he was in that other up. place. So Phil, I'm, I don't know. Pulled out. Yeah, Phil, <laughs> I'll leave it Phil to the audience here. to decide on that for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Phillips over here baptizing a eunuch. And next thing you know, he's in a city. And my favorite part about that entire story is he doesn't drop a ball. He just goes on preaching. The gospel. <laughs> just keeps going. Just keeps He's going. not questioning it at all. He's not like, yo, like the Lord just, he's like, whatever. I gotta go. I'm like, I'm it gonna go like, share the gospel. I got an assignment. I, I gotta make it happen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. But it's just one of those things where, yeah, you be sitting there in the most boring times and you'd be like, Lord, if you want to snatch me up and put me over <laughs> here right now, real quick, like, that'd be great. You can go three I, hours from now. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. That's so funny. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that is good. But, uh, so yeah, happy new year. Hope y'all had a Merry Christmas as well. Yeah. You know, we're, this is year one. We're gonna get way better at all of that. Like, <laughs> But so, yeah, so we're in the future. We're recording mm. to the future. So technically we're in the past recording about the future because uh. it's going to happen. So when they listen to it, we will have done this in the past. They'll be in. This is really confusing. All yeah, it sudden. is. Like, now I'm wondering, am yeah. I talking to my future self? And if I listen, I, will something happen in the universe? Like, no. is it going to create a space time continuum that <laughs> right, I'm going to have right. to go back? <laughs> Look, Marty. <laughs> back and close? Like, no. I need, need uh, 
1.21 gigawatts to get to where I need to go? Is that what's going to happen? Yeah. Just, it's, 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 pre- it's at this present point where everyone's like, you know what? <laughs> New year, I'm done with this podcast. <laughs> yeah. You think they're in the future. They're talking about the past. Oh, man. We, we better get back on topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pop rocks, pop pebbles. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's go. But speaking of topic, oh. we are going to dive into our topic of the week. Let's get it. Topic of the week. This week, we're going to be chatting about something really cool. We had this idea. It's not a new idea, but it's an idea that we had uh, in in order to have some conversation, really chatting about some biblical themes and stories that we think would make great board games. And not only that, it's maybe like what sort of game they might be. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, for the sake of time and the sake of our brains, um, you know, this is not going to be an exhaustive list. Uh, You know, we might camp out even on one or two and just kind of dig deeper into the conversation as something kind of sparks the the creative flow. Um, Mm -hmm. And I am sure many have done this and sat down um, and thought about, wow, that'd be a really cool board game. We just wanted to talk about it because we thought it'd be fun to talk about. So we might even mention a game and you're like, yeah, that game already exists. That's such as a cool like let us know comment yeah. man this will be in the facebook group uh you can comment even on the spotify i found out that you can do all that and on the oh, youtube nice. leave a comment and say hey that game actually exists it's this and this i would love to learn that uh, yeah. and know because i don't know all the faith-based games that are in existence but i'm always interested in learning more um so i'm excited for this conversation i think it's actually going to be a lot of fun so ray why don't you get us started like what's a biblical theme or story uh that you think would make a great board game Cool. Uh, actually, I, w- I just want to start off when going through this, like you gave me, you pitched this idea to me and like, this is what we should do. And I was like, yeah, that's awesome, man. It's kudos to you and to every other creator out there making games, because even just trying to think of a game from beginning to end or what the basis would be was tough. I was like, there, there's so many things in the Bible that we can make games out of. And there's so many stories. I mean, it's story after story after story and come up. And I was like, oh man, this would be a good one. And then I'm like, well, what are you going to do? What, what's the point of it? What, are you going to get points? How are you going to, how's it even going to work? You know? So even just thinking through that on a creative level and just, just trying to throw ideas out there was even tough. So man, for mm. everybody who's ever made a game and has brought it to market or is working on it or prototypes, man, mm. big shout out to you because you guys are amazing. <laughs> I'm just going to start there. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, in great. thinking through it, some of the things that I came up with, uh, so I had a couple of them, some of the, some of the fun ones, like I, I think I told you the other day, I was thinking um of a game that like it the land is filled with giants, you know, think of, uh, mm. think of the spies going in to, to spy out the land and like there's giants and they're scared, but you got to clear the land out of the giants and so in order to take over the land i don't know what kind of game that'd be these are just ideas joe so uh just just yeah, yeah, work yeah. with me here okay you know what i mean i'm gonna yeah. be leaning on you for a lot of help here to to decide <laughs> what kind of game this would be what the mechanics might look like or or yeah. uh one of the other ones that i thought actually so kim and i were talking i was like what about you know so we're, we're pitching games back and forth right which actually was pretty fun um just having ideas but uh, she came up with a sweet one, and I was like, that might be super dope, is if it was like, uh, think of like a shoots and ladders or like a, um, uh, let's see, where you're traveling around. But it's like the journey of Paul, and so you have to get to all these different places to preach the gospel, right? And you have your missions to go preach or to, or to do whatever. And there's hindrances along the way, of course. And one of the things that I thought might be cool, a part of the game would be you have an opportunity to go preach, but you know, if you're going to go preach, you're going to be put in jail. So then you're going to lose some turns. So then it's either like you don't, you don't preach, but then you can continue on, but then something happens as, as a consequence of that. But if you do okay. preach and you get put in jail and you lose turns, right? So it'd be like a a board going around the board and trying who can hit these spots first kind of deal. Hmm. Um, so that's one. That's one. Yeah. 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 Yep. And that, that kind of sounds a little bit like that game commissioned, right? Where you're going oh, out right. and you're and you have the different apostles and, and you're going through right. it's cooperative and you're trying to plant churches and, and do all that. So a little little different than what you're talking about, but same kind of thing. Like let's go out and follow Paul's missionary journey and yeah. um, you know, there are different things that are going on and all that. I like that. So, yeah, I like no, that. Yeah. Okay. Uh let's see. I also had uh 
this this is probably one more that's actually a little bit more doable was the kids game I was telling you about. I, I see it kind of like as a kids game or just like kind of a sure. fun card game, party game where uh, it's called uh, Last in the Garden. And so basically it's going back to Genesis, the beginning of Genesis in the garden. You're starting there. Right. And so you have. Obviously, in the Bible, you have Adam and Eve, and then they had all the animals, but uh, you would have, have more people to be able to play. Uh, but the goal basically is to be the last one in the guard. And so it'd be uh, a card game where you basically draw cards on your turn. And so if uh, you get an animal, you have to name the animal as part of the fun of the game, right? Because mm. that's, that's what yeah. Adam had to do was name all the animals, and they had to take care of the guard but at some point there's like these serpent cards and if you draw a serpent card then you get kicked out of the guard and whoever's the last one wins oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. i mean again mm-hmm. i think that that is a that is a pretty sweet little kids game right because now it's like oh i don't want to draw the serpent card. <laughs> honestly man i didn't even think about this you know what it reminds me of uh you've played this with me i think is danger noodle Oh Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that just hit me where it's like, oh my gosh, that's <laughs> yes. that's danger noodle. But it's like you could make that like a biblical theme because like, yeah, that's if so y'all true. haven't played. Okay, if you're listening to this and you haven't played Danger Noodle, get on that game. It is the simplest game ever, but it is hilarious. It's fun. Yeah. One game might go thirty seconds, and the next one might go forty five <laughs> minutes. There's no telling what like. But it is literally like, honestly, I got that when COVID hit and it was like one of the best $20 investments that I made during that time period. Yeah, the game, it it is fun. It is fun and and funny. It's like every time you pull the car, you're laughing. Um, Yeah, because they name them all weird. Like uh, the rhino is the chubby unicorn. (laughs) But but the whole thing, the whole thing is, is that you're trying to get to exactly 30 points. And Mm. if you go over 30 points, you have to work your way back down. And there's positive cards and negative cards. But if you draw the danger noodle, then you lose your entire your entire um uh number account like your whole yeah. thing so sometimes yeah. that's good and sometimes that's bad but that's when you start talking about it, i'm like oh man it's like the that it, you know the adam and eve you know it's the genesis card yeah. danger noodle where i can actually see it now more because it's like oh and and then again even the naming of the animals right so right uh, the kids having to come up with something funny where like in danger noodle it was the again the chubby unicorn or yeah. what's the murder log which is what yeah, they the, call the alligator <laughs> the, the crocodile yeah 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 <laughs> right, the, right. Uh, stripe, so, what, the what was the, the zebra is like the the stripe unicorn or something like that oh i know what is it oh i can't even remember i'd have to pull it out but yeah some hilarious yeah, yeah. formal chicken formal chicken yeah. was the penguin <laughs> the penguin <laughs> like the best, dude. Like, so again yes. you see these kids making up these crazy names for these animals like yeah dude, it would just be, man, I'm be, half be fun laughing yeah i got it right here i'm gonna oh yeah i want to i want to know what some of the animal names are what the what the zebra is because that's pretty good yeah this yeah. game is too good and yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stab rabbit for porcupine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you got a floating potato for a manatee. Uh, pant- the pantless thunder goose. That's the ostrich. That's so good. Panda whale for the for the orca. Um, extra long horse for the giraffe. <laughs> like no, somebody was like, yeah, that one's easy. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. You have sea spider. Uh, for the octopus, cat bird for the owl. Oh man, where uh, forest corgi for the fox? That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that one. But formal chicken got me. Yeah, real good. formal chicken is good, <laughs> dude. The bear, <laughs> the bear's called furry nope. <laughs> that's the best. Oh, the zebra's. Oh, the zebra was prison pony. That's prison pony. That's yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Either way, the game. The game's a riot yeah. and frustrating, and yet uh, and fun. just yeah. mindless fun. And it always ends up coming out way too late and taking way too long. Cause yeah, really but it's it's a it's a good laugh every time. <laughs> that's what it reminded I, me of. I'm sorry. That is saying. that is maybe that was deep in the recesses of my mind somewhere, and that's that's how <laughs> that's how that came to be. You know, so yeah. Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't have a lot, man. I I was like just throwing things. I was just thinking of biblical stories and was thinking like, yeah. okay, you know, like uh, David's mighty men. You could do like a uh, action hero game, and uh, you're trying yeah. to, you know, create these, have these quests, and whoever gets most quests done by like being a, um, 
worker placement or like even like an engine builder kind of like you gain workers yeah. as you're going and those are your mighty men as you're trying to trying to mm. uh defeat uh foes as along the way you know some stuff like that i don't know the bible is just so full of so many yeah. amazing stories there's so much to do you know yeah all this tons well i was thinking about your spies idea right and i'm like oh you could make that like a dungeon crawl right where you're like kind of going through and it's you know things are being revealed as you walk into different uh, spaces and mm-hmm. ta-da, there's a giant Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know and or you know or you could make that there's a game it's called like unmatched um and it's kind of like a close combat kind of you have this you have characters and so you could pick like alice in wonderland is one character alice from alice in wonderland mm-hmm. and robin hood and then they go up against each other and they have like targeted attacks and long range and uh, uh-huh. kind and of RPG so you could do style. that kind of stuff yeah a little bit well yeah, this one's it's not really RPG. It's more like decks and you have your you have your cards oh, okay. and you're playing okay. cards and it allows you to do certain things. It's a fun game, fun system. Um, but again, yeah, you could totally do like the spies where like you're you know, you're actually just going through the promised land. So it's not like dark like a dungeon. It would actually right. be like really nice, like you'd have milk and you know, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just kind of revealing itself and there are the giants and then you have a combat system and you have to deal with them. You know, I I don't know why that just kind of popped in where I was like, Oh, that'd be like a really fun, um, fun mechanic there. Yeah. You know, and but even even what you just said, like with with David and his mighty men, like you know, are there ways where you could do a worker placement type game where you're gaining more guys and you're like spending those guys and doing all sorts of different right. things? Yeah, yeah, the increase in power, like because they're mighty men, right? Kind of like apiary, yeah. how the bees increase in power. So like yep. every time you come back from a war, you're 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 gaining a strength, but at at some point, yep. you know, they have to rest and and uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting because like thinking through these things. My my mind was limited to thinking through the stories of what it was. It was like, you know, and I, I was thinking about your game, Victory, uh, and how you've always explained it as it is a biblically inspired game, right? Like this, obviously, yeah. there's there's elements of the gospel and there's elements of the Bible and different things within the game itself and the overall theme of frightened principalities. You know, um, it, it fits within the biblical narrative, but it's it's not, you know, solely based on a story of the Bible right, at, right. to where yep. it's like you can't be creative. And that's that's where I think I was having my issue at was trying to think outside of like, OK, uh, when, um, uh, yeah, David and his mighty men did these X, they did X, Y and Z. How do we make X, Y, and Z make sense instead of being like, oh, yeah. I can just use that as a theme right, to create right, whatever yeah. I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's where it yep. was like the endless possibilities, right? <laughs> yeah, well, we're right. Well, and again, I think that's part of the creative process where it was like with Victory, you know, I just was like, okay, we're going to emulate evangelism and spiritual war and try to bring mm-hmm. in certain elements and then, you know, use artifacts and different things to, to kind of help along the way, just because you're trying to create that deck builder. And so you're just, you're using different, different biblical themes and elements throughout, you know, yeah. and then that's just, but that's serving the purpose of the larger theme of that evangelism and spiritual war, mm-hmm. um, you know, and just in taking, taking back, you know, and winning souls for Christ and then, you know, banishing principalities out of the yeah. city, right? Like, cause they're terrorizing the city and you're dealing with them, you know, obviously in Christ and, you know, we just added mechs and made the, made the principalities yeah. like these giant kaijus, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, cause again, you know, but, it, but it's, it's, it's playing with the theme. Yep. And so, so, you know, but, but again, also, also what I, what I like about what you're saying too, is I think you do need a jump off point, right? Like you need to have some kind of boundary to be like, okay, what is the premise? What is the theme? Like when you're, when you're creating a game, unless you're making something purely abstract, you generally want to have something that is grounding what you're doing. So if you're like, Mm -hmm. okay, we're going to deal with the mighty men, you know, but but let's say we wanted to make that more of a future context or what that might look like out here. Or what about this? Or hey, if we add that element in, could we create something that, yeah, it's, it's, it's based on this, but it's not bound to that. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and in some cases it's best to be bound to it. And I'll, I'm going to talk about a game I played recently, um, you know, here shortly. And I just love what, what this, uh, what this guy did with the theme. I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but, okay. but again, I think that, you know, 
starting this conversation, especially from a design perspective, because there's so much you can do, you know, biblically, you know, if you rip through the Bible and you're like, wow, all of this could be, it could be a game. Like yeah. it'd be really like the hard part is figuring out, okay, what type of game and how does that mechanic work? And do we get points? Is it cooperative? Can it be competitive? How do they do this? You know, what's going on there? And so I think that's what gets the creative process rolling, yep. right? Is just asking some of those questions and thinking through it. You know, like you even said, okay, we have the spy game, but I don't know what type of game it would be. And I'm like, well, in my head, it immediately goes to, yeah, like this, this dungeon crawl. Cause why does a dungeon crawl make sense? Cause they're spies in the land and they're trying to sneak around and be, you know, quiet. And then they're, oh, there's a, there's a giant that pops up and now we got to deal with it, you know, and, and ultimately you're banishing all the giants from, from the land and, um, you know, and entering into the promised land. Now yeah. someone could say, well, they don't do that in the Bible. They don't banish all the giants and then go in like initially, that's not what happens. As a matter of fact, they come back and there's mixed <laughs> reports and all that, you know, like, yeah. and so again, it's like, yeah, you're right. But in, in what should they have done? Mm. Honestly, they should have gone in and banished all, you know what I mean? Like right, this was right. the, this is your land. Like that's what they were supposed to do. Yep. And since they did, they wandered. Right. And like this was a costly thing. Well, what if they went in and did what they were supposed to go do right now? Now that changes it like this is a what if thing. Right. Like, yeah. uh, you you know, you have the whole Marvel. What if like, well, what if in in a let's say a, a parallel universe? What if, you know, they went in and actually did this? Yeah. And they went like in and they, and they dealt with it initially, you know, and again, I, I think that puts it into a different construct where, yes, you're right. Like that doesn't follow the biblical narrative, but it's using the it's using the biblical principle and the element and saying, well, this is what they were supposed to go do. And so we also can apply that in, in, in our life and, and just being obedient to what God has called us to do, to be strong and courageous, you know, as we see in Joshua later when they go and they take the land. Right. Like, yep. <clears throat> excuse me. There's so much to that, you know, so it's like, you know, do you want to do you want to make a game where Joshua and Caleb, they all come back and then they're dealing with poor reports? Or do you want to create a game that says, no, you know what I mean? Like, it's not it's not going to work, right? Like, like, no, like we're going to take that and we're going to say the worst what game ever. It's like everything right? in like, the game is bad. Yeah, we went to the land. We saw there was giants. We came back around. A couple of us were like, we should go take the giants. But the rest of the squad, they were like, nah, bro. They're too There's big. No, we're like grasshoppers. Literally no way to win this game. Like, it just ends. <laughs> the game just ends. We're like, ends hey, in bad reports. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. No, and, but, and, and again, yeah. nobody wants to play that. You know, so how do you take the how do you take the jump off? And and yeah, you're but you're also not taking a game and saying that we're going to be the end all be all of truth. We're like we're mm-hmm. we're taking a scenario. And so, like, I thought about, um, you know, Jesus feeding the five thousand and how dope of a worker placement game that could be where you're just going around and, and, and you know, you're you're utilizing, you know, the disciples as workers and they're going mm-hmm. out and they're, you know, feeding people and then collecting the food. And, you know, but then I was like, well, how do you win? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. everyone's fed. Like, is it cooperative? <laughs> like, how do you? You know, how do you gain the points in this? And do you yeah. could you make that a competitive? Like, hey, Peter, ha, ha, I fed more than you did. You right, know what I mean? Right. Like, ah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, that'd be kind of bizarre. Where you just each well, the disciples were very there. competitive, though. I mean, it's that, true. That that, it's that, true. that 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 just falls right in line with the Bible. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, they're they're always arguing with each other. So I guess yeah. it, maybe that's what they were doing. They're running around like, bro, you only fed you only fed one hundred and fifty. Like. Yeah. I'm up to 450 fed right now. Like you better right. catch up, homie. Um, you know, I don't know if they call each other homie, but I thought it would be like a it'd be a fun worker placement kind of game, right? Um, then I was like, oh, like what could you do with like Jonah? And I was mm. like, okay, in Jonah, they cast lots, like they're trying to figure out who's causing the problem, right? So mm. they're like on the mm-hmm. ship and they're casting lots. Well, dice, right? So I was like, oh, it'd be super dope if you took like Jonah and you made like a dice placement kind of game and you you know you had those random draws and you're utilizing the dice values in order to gain certain you know things yeah and ultimately ultimately go to Nineveh preach the gospel uh don't sit under a tree and and weep you know like but actually like go out and like 
do what again do what god's called you to do but like having yeah. having some element in that where you know um you're just using that that you know that uh that dice placement mechanic or something again pff, i i wasn't staying up late trying to work out all these games it was just right. stuff that was running through my head and someone's gonna hear it and be like that's dumb like cool it's <laughs> dumb I mean, whatever um but then i was like oh you could make a really cool deck builder out of jesus calling his disciples Mm. right again do i have any idea how that works in reality no but i was like hey it's kind of cool because you're calling these disciples and and you could bring that into you know your deck and maybe you're just trying to create the dopest deck of disciples i don't i don't know how that how that all plays out um but again just stuff that was popping in my head and then uh, i had like the nativity scene um and you would do like a story driven game where there's just certain actions that are being taken. So some games like uh, a game called like stuff fables and some other games, they play through like even uh, there's a wizard of Oz game that Ravensburger did that. Like it's like a storybook and each page presents a new set of things you've got to do. And it could be cooperative and, and and just play through the nativity scene. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, and then you enter in and now you've got the wise men and different things that are occurring that you're just kind of playing through. And it's a story driven um, story of the, the birth of Christ. And I'm like, that actually is kind of dope. Like I could see that play out more than some of these other things where I'm like, Oh, that would be a really cool way to teach, you know, the Christmas narrative, if you will. Yeah. Um, and just a fun way to engage, you know, uh, people in that again, way more niche and probably, or niche as people far more cultured than me say (laughs) niche. Um, you know, but, but again, like, how can you, how can you walk through and like teach the, teach that, you know, the prophecy being fulfilled and, and all of that. And you could literally go right through like Luke two and just make Mm -hmm. that your, your game. Um, Yeah. I think would be, would be pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, and then we had, uh, I was, I pitched something to Ray and was like, that's actually something we're going to focus on and have yes. already started working on, uh, this game. Cause I, I had uh, my boss, oh, well, he doesn't like that word. My, our executive director, uh, I don't know that he listens to this, but if I, if he heard me call him boss, he'd be a little <laughs> bit sad. Our executive director, Scott, you know, he was like, Joe, you need to create a game where like, you know, something to do with like the first shall be last and, and just all that. And I was like, yeah. And I kind of sat on it for months, you know, and then we were revisiting this kind of going through the theme and they, and it just hit me. And I was like, Oh, I, I need to capitalize on that idea. Uh, wrong word. I need to, to take that <laughs> idea and like put it into motion. I was like, make something happen. yeah, yes. put it in motion. Like, yeah. Like, cause, cause I was like, I can see it now. And started working on like a worker placement, you know, where the first shall be last and starting to just work through different mechanics to to generate this um, this idea. And I was like, oh, and the way you make it a competitive game is like that verse that says, like, outdo one another in giving honor. Right. So I was like, how do we create a game where it's all based on service and giving honor to one another and and getting into this process where you're, you're literally going down a point tracker rather than up a point tracker? But then then it was like, oh, well, wait a second. As I'm serving and as I'm doing these things and I'm, you know, um, I'm trying to to reach more people and do more things, spiritual warfare increases. So it was like, well, let's have a spiritual warfare tracker on each of the player mats. And mm. so as you're doing more things, like as I'm going out and I'm volunteering, I'm going out and I'm doing these different things, my spiritual warfare meter increases. And when it hurts, hits certain points, I get these like brokenness cards. And if I don't deal with this brokenness at the end of the game, it actually hurts me. Right. So in this case, I would gain points when the object is to lose points or, um, you know, and, but if I actually deal with it through a mechanic, then I would, um, you know, I would, have a positive reward that would net me less points. And so like end game scoring kind of stuff. And then I was like, Oh, well, what if like you played the game through rounds? And then I was like, well, even more particular, let's look at the seven days. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you've got the six days of creation and the seventh day, um, you know, they rest and, and I'm like, well, what if at the end of each day, everyone gained a blessing card and that blessing card was like an instant reward. And that would, you know, deal with the different things where it might flip over a brokenness card or it might do, you know, gain you some more resources to go out and serve with. And then I was like, well, what if at the end of the game, I'm stuck with resources? Well, that should, that should actually be a problem. And I Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. should I should gain points when I'm trying to lose points for the resources I have in my hand because I didn't I didn't spend all I had, right? right like that right. I didn't pour myself out. Parable of the sower, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Like, and I wasn't just using these resources to give, and then like just so much stuff started flowing through my brain, and I was like, yeah, we're we're doing that, and so now you guys have heard that officially here first on January first, which it is today, I think. Well, we're. It's not today, but it will be yeah. when this, when yeah, this yeah. Comes, you know, whatever that future, future <laughs> past thing that we had. Um, but you know, again, like it just, it was one of those things where there's a theme and it was like, okay, there's this idea. But then it was like, that's when it hit where I was like, oh, the first show, you know, for the last, but like, let's outdo one. I'm like, how do you make that a competitive? Like that feels yeah. weird. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, but if we're out, do- if we're out doing one another and giving honor. Right. Like, we're, like, oh, you just thought you gave me honor by doing that thing. Well, I'm going to go give you double honor and just yeah. do more because, of, you know, I want to give you more honor, not for selfish gain, but because I love you as a brother and I'm just going to give you more honor because I want to celebrate you. Um all sorts of stuff. And then my wife was even like, man, on the seventh day uh, of the round, like where it's end game scoring, she's like, every player should be able to do at least one more good thing. Like Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Like right. we can go out and we can do good on the Sabbath. And so like, what's that, what's that good thing that someone could do? Like you could take mm. one more turn that it would allow you to like do one more thing that, you know, but it's only one turn versus a full complete round. You just get one more turn. And yeah. so I'm really actually excited to try to put I, all of it together. I am too, man, listening to it from uh, this and listening to all the components again. It's really funny because I'm thinking through it and I'm thinking during gameplay because it's competitive, how it's, a game of trying to outdo each other in honor. And so you're actually, (laughs) you're trying to out honor somebody. And so you give them resources and they get mad. They're mad at you for giving them resources. You know what I mean? Like, think about that for a moment. Like, but in the real world, it's kind of, sometimes it's similar like that because I don't know if you've ever felt it or like seen people that just, they just have that, that, mood about like they don't want anything good to happen or it's it's not even they just get uh annoyed when people are doing things oh why is they so nice why are, why are you being so nice yeah. to me or why you know what i mean like sometimes that's really how it is people really get like that and so it's funny to think about yeah. it from a game perspective to be like i could actually get upset because i'm trying to win and i'm getting upset because you're you're giving me honor you know i'm like oh joe yeah. i don't want that honor man no you keep your honor I was doing good without it. You know what I, mean? I was doing good without that. <laughs> but that's honor like, that you just like go, go, go to people who love their sin and love darkness. Men, men didn't come to yeah. light because they love darkness. They didn't want their deeds to expose. And so when you go to somebody yeah. and you're like, Hey, Hey man, I'm just trying to give you this Jesus, man. Cause your life could be way yeah. better. And if you have him, man, you could have abundant life. And they're like, I don't want that Jesus. I'm, I'm good yeah. without yeah. it. And like, well, you need to play this game to learn how to out honor people and how to accept it with grace, okay? And humility. <laughs> sure, and accept it with grace. <laughs> yeah. No, again, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you look at it and you're like, you have that theme. And yeah, there's points where you'd be like, no, 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 don't give me that resource. No, nope, you're giving me resources. I don't want <laughs> right. your resources because that's going to cost <laughs> it's me. such a funny thing. But, but yeah, yeah. But, but again, though, it's like that's what creates part of the strategy and the fun in the game because now I have to outdo you more. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, you just gave me five coins. I need to give you seven. Right. Right. Like, so again, like that, I, it all works in that where it's like, oh, like, man, you just help me out. Right. Like, are you just because because there, there's a mechanic in the game that I've been trying to work in. Like, if let's say you used coins and you gave me those coins. I can actually take those coins and invest them and then gain more to be able to do more. Mm. So it doesn't hurt me to get your coins unless it's like the end and you're just like, ha, I'm going to stick this dude with seven coins because right. he's going to get points you know however that plays out i have have no idea very very early on in this process but but i did want a uh investment section like i mean i even have it like where it's literally like you go to work Mm. like your worker goes to work like it's not set in biblical time it's like in today's day like you go to work Uh and then when you recall that your worker gains that money that is going in and you could actually take that money and invest that money you know, over around to be able to gain, you know, uh, you know, a certain amount of yield income based on that. And, and then you could turn that into, I'm now going to go and feed the homeless. I'm now going to go and, right. um, you know, uh, take care of my neighbor or whatever it is. So you can turn that 
that financial piece into um, blessing Some sort somebody of good else. Deed. It yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't have to mess with another player so much. And so even if you did give me coins, because that could be a mechanic in there, there's still an option where I could turn that into a greater blessing, mm. right? So, so you know, it's it's one of those things where you know you can you can do all sorts of stuff in it. And again, very early on, but I'm excited about it because again, it's taking a theme. It's taking it's taking an idea and trying to create something out of that that would demonstrate the principle, but yet is a fun, you know, competitive game that we're mm-hmm. literally trying to outdo one another in service. Because what do we need to be doing? Outdoing one another in service. Like in in real life, like right. we should celebrate and be thankful and and be excited when we can when we can love people in genuine ways and provide for them yep. and do those things rather than it feeling burdensome um yeah. you know like you know the scripture says that God loves a cheerful giver and somebody who is literally like excited to help and excited to serve and excited to give and and you know i think we all need a, a touch more excitement in that area uh, in some yeah, ways agreed. where it's like agreed. Man, you know i just want to do that so yeah so you guys yeah again you heard it all first and we just broke down most of the game here so <laughs> this is uh, but but there's still so much i mean i've drawn yeah. up a little bit of a board and and got you know and i'm still looking at it going okay there's so many things to consider here that you know i don't want the game to be super duper heavy um, I'd prefer it to be in that light to midweight category. Mm-hmm. So lots of things, lots of things, but excited about it. And again, it's it's a project that's going to take me a little bit longer because um, I'm focusing on the expansions for victory and and some other things that are that are flowing through the brain that need to happen first. Yeah. But Another cool pumped. thing too uh, about that is uh, even bringing people in. Like you've asked me to have some input on it. Some of our other coworkers you've asked and yeah. I even see that, that, you know, like we were talking about board games being that piece to get people together to to build fellowship and to disciple and all that. Even on the back end, I see that happening with this, like in the creative yeah. process of like and yeah. probably I'm sure with uh, Victory, the same thing. You were asking people, you were yes. playtesting, you were doing those things. And so even without it actually being there, I'm, I'm, I'm for all the people who are creating, you still have that same uh opportunity to you know fellowship and and uh disciple and and build relationship yeah. and talk because like you're as you're going through that process you know naturally you need other input from people so it it's mm-hmm. it's cool again seeing how games these board games are bringing people together in so many instances you know Oh yeah, you you can't do this on your own. There's no way. I'm so thankful for the people that help with Victory and that are, you know, future people that are going to help on different projects, you know, like, Mm -hmm. because again, I don't see everything and I don't have all the greatest ideas. I, I love hearing from other people because that sparks other creativity. That sparks other things. Like someone, it'd be super dope, dude. If, if out of nowhere, someone's like, Hey, I love that spies idea. Let's go create that game. And then they want to go and start to create that. Like how, how dope, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because, yeah. because people start to hear it, you know, or, and go through that process or it comes up with other ideas or all these other things. Like this is the cool part about that, that creative process where it just kind of sparks things. And so like what I was saying, and, and, uh, you know, I don't want us to go way over our time here. I don't, so we'll see how that all goes. But, um, you know, I played, uh, Andrew, uh, Harmon from Harmon games. He has created a game called parable kingdom. And this is in the playtesting phase. He's been working on it for a little bit now. And I am stoked about this game stoked like i walked away from the play test and i was like what did i just play this game is so well thought out like it's really fun like it was really fun it was a pretty heavy teach but once you figured out like what things were it was a a very satisfying very simple easy to understand process right once Mm. you knew where everything was it was good So it wasn't like overwhelmingly crazy, but think about like apiary where there's just a lot of different things you can do. But once you figure it out, it's like, oh, this is not that challenging. You just got to figure out what the symbols are and what the things are. But, but the, the game is like, it's, 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 I mean, I'm going to use a pretty strong word. Like it's brilliant. Like Mm -hmm. it's so well done. And I mean, you're just going around this road to different areas and on the way you can collect, you know, these worker types and these worker types are eventually going to be uh, able to be cashed in. Like you're going to use them and spend them to gain different things. But, but the way that he 
he took parables and he made the parables like the worker placement spots and um you know so so he just has these different places and like one of the coolest mechanics is like he has he used the parable like of the seat of honor right and like so you know someone goes and sits there but then someone else that's closer to the you know has a higher reputation they come and they tell you to go and you end up all the way down at the end right so he's got this like seat of honor mechanic and you can go and you can take the chair and he's got a reputation track like on the thing and he's like but if any any time like someone has higher reputation than you you lose the chair and at the end of the game, the chair's worth points, right? And so, like, you want the chair if you're going to take it, but you got to have the higher reputation because if you don't, you've lost the chair. And oh, I'm wow. like, that is that's brilliant, right? Yeah. And then he's like, he's dealing with the the um the 99 and and the one, right? And so you've got this, you've got sheep that are all over the board, and you can collect them, and you add the sheep to your player board, but then you have to go to a specific spot to like add them back to your fold. So you go and then you, you go over here to this, this called the fold the spot. And then you go and you can add them into your pen as now you found them and you're adding them back in. And then if you did that, plus you had the shepherd, you can gain more points on this, like, one track that he's got going on there and then there's a favor track that's coming up and you got these blessing cards and like the way these like things work with his workers and then you're going in he's he's got this dope mechanic where you like you start off with a foundation on sand and and you can go and you can spend a certain amount of workers to upgrade it to the rock and then you (laughs) can build buildings but if you don't if you build the buildings like you can build them while they're still on the sand but if you don't update upgrade your foundation and then a storm token comes out at the end of the round because at the end of the round there's like these trumpet tokens if a storm token comes out and you haven't upgraded your your foundation the buildings collapse and you lose (laughs) your cards amazing like a dude it it is amazing phenomenal like i don't want to i don't want to give the whole game away right now but i mean like i was like i'm still obviously i'm like excited about what he's done here because i just think it i think it's brilliant and again really fun like it's a game i cannot wait to get to the table you're gonna you're gonna love yeah this I, 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 man this is the second time i've heard that. about it and the first i was like this is me i it's funny because i didn't actually play it but seeing your excitement and having you tell yeah. me about it i got excited about it and i'm like i yeah. want to play that game it sounds super fun and the mechanics that you were telling me about and the 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 board game uh, set up and um, just every component about it really got me engaged. And I actually had been thinking about it too. Like, man, I wonder, wonder when I'm, I'm going to be able to play this game because yeah. it sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping to get some actual physical prototype soon. Cause he's in our area, which is awesome. Like he's out yeah, here in Kalamazoo. So we can actually so play the, that game. I mean, I played it digitally on tabletop simulator and still had fun. And I don't always love tabletop simulator, but I had a really great time with it. Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, I, I'm really excited about it. That is a game that it's, it's like an Insta back for me. Like mm-hmm. as soon as he says I'm on Kickstarter, I'm like, just take my money. Let's go. Yeah. Like, <laughs> let's, let's just get it done because, because I really, I really do think he's created something very unique and mm-hmm. just a lot of fun and really well done and so well thought out. And just, just again, I'm newer to the design space, but even thinking about it from a design perspective, I was like, man, this is, this is so good. And yeah. just, he's thought through so much. And so I'm really, really uh, pretty pumped about that. And uh, again, you guys are hearing this January 1st, but it might give you a tell as to what day we recorded it, um, is that this is really dope. Actually, speaking of faith-based games, um, deliverance, Deliverance, the game Deliverance. I think I've showed you that big cooperative with the giant, with the mm-hmm. angels yeah. and all that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Deliverance has hit number one on the Board Game Geek hotness uh, ratings. It is now wow. the number one game on Board Game Geek, which is super impressive. Like, not a little wow. bit impressive, super impressive. And it's the first Christian game to do so. Wow. So this is like this is praise like god. history, right? Yeah, like praise god indeed. And uh and and Andrew uh Lowen, he the creator, he posted um a post about it and he was like, you know, there was a lot who said, "Oh, you know, you shouldn't waste your energy in a Christian game and all these things." And he st- stood his ground and said, "No, I really feel like God's calling me to make this game or whatever." And or he just felt led however God was moving in that space and he's he's I mean, it's been seven and a half years he said, like from conception wow. to getting it on people's tables and it's now the number one game on board game design or board game uh, geek. And 
man, that's that's incredible. Like, I mean, I even paused and told Scott today. I said, this is a kind of a big milestone. Like, it's not like from where I'm sitting, because, again, yeah. this is this is our hobby, right? Like, this yeah, is something yeah. that I enjoy. But I'm like, look at God. I yep. mean, like, that's so incredible to me that a faith based game on a secular for all practical purposes, more secular site. Right. That that yep. uh, that game is the number one um, game. It's that's amazing. Yeah. That That is amazing, <laughs> yeah. man. That, that's uh that's so cool to hear and just makes me think about how God just continues to advance his kingdom in every area. And like you're yes. saying, this being a. Uh, a, a secular board that they've reached the top, you know, cause uh, I'm thinking about it in terms of, of like a music, like a, a, a billboard yeah, chart number right, one, exactly. you know, and, and having yep. like uh, a Christian artist at the top there, you know, something like that. Yes. But, but we do see in, in different spaces and in, in sports and um, in um, uh, different uh, politics and different, different things. Well, maybe not so much politics, at least at <laughs> last, no, maybe but someday. Yeah, maybe someday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, seeing seeing again God's people rise up to the top and and glorify yeah. Him and, and point to Him, yep. and it's just amazing, man. I love that. I love. I'm just so thankful to see that because again, the world would have you believe that we are being defeated and it's just getting worse and it's dark and it's bleak right. and this and that. But man, God is alive and present and active, yes. and His people are moving. His kingdom is advancing, yes. um, and uh, we need to celebrate every space that we're in that that he yeah. is showing up man so that is awesome news man yeah. i'm i'm excited to hear that and i can't wait to play it it looks it looks sweet yeah uh, it looks well it's part sweet. of our game day so yeah i, I cannot to, wait yeah, man I'm i cannot wait. That. yeah <laughs> but but you know he, even through it though he was saying that like he's getting like 10 to thousand 10 10 to thousand 10 thousand to eleven thousand uh hits on that page now because he's num- like the game's number one wow. so like now even like the reach is increasing you know not just maybe for a desire for the game but also just the fact that i mean they gotta ask questions i mean this is like right. it's an unashamedly you know biblically centric game right um which is it's just pretty amazing i don't know i thought that was just really really cool and wanted to kind of pause and celebrate that because i think that's a big deal um, I yeah. know from where I'm sitting and I've even had conversation with Andrew a little bit back where we were talking about how we think that God is doing in board games. What, you know, I think we mentioned one of the podcasts, like what he's done, done with music where, you know, it's a slow roll, but I think we're at, we're at the beginning phases of, uh, mm-hmm. you know, just some doors just being flung open. And I think he's just done a really big thing in that space. So very well worth the celebration and completely different side note i'm very excited because uh new kingdom gardeners from jack dunbar and new kingdom gaming that should be arriving at my house sometime soon i'm just anxiously awaiting the uh tracking numbers that don't don't show up right now but at this point when this podcast airs i am hoping that i have that game and have played it yeah so yeah so that that'll be fun i'm really pumped because uh it's been a you know three-year journey for him and it's really neat to see that coming out and i'm excited about this game and again just kind of even dealing with like a really cool mechanic and i mean gardening and thorns and Mm. how they you know pop up and just yeah really neat stuff man i'm just excited for what god's doing in this space so i like yeah so hey if it oh go ahead Oh yeah, I was gonna say. How long did you say that it took uh, him to come out with Deliverance? Seven and a half years. Yeah, so it was a seven and a half year process. I guess it was like uh, five years to get it to the Kickstarter, and then everything like the you know to get yeah. it through from Kickstarter to people's tables. I guess has been a seven and a half year process. That's amazing, man. Because you know that's yeah. like the number of completion. Right. No, no, absolutely. It's, yeah, uh, it's, I mean, like, I just, I can't, I just can't get past, like, let that ride. Yeah. Cause, I, and, and now it's number one. And he's like, especially when you have yeah. people saying, man, just throw that away. And he's like, no, man, I'm going to st- stay yeah. steadfast and, and glorify God, man. And, and look at where it's yeah. at. That's, that's amazing. I just, since you said that, I keep thinking about that. It is, that's great. Yeah, and I'm I'm excited to play it as well. Again, I have it; it's sitting on my shelf, just waiting to be broke open and played. So I'm very excited for it because, um, you know, I've just heard phenomenal things about the game itself, and mm-hmm. that's just that's just really really good. So I'm very pumped, and it's cooperative, so it'll be a lot of fun to, to yeah. throw down on that. So battle some demons, you know. Um, 
But yeah, so uh, again, I don't know how long we've been recording because I forgot to look at the time. So yeah, who knows? But we're, whatever. We're, we're about our uh, average been, time. I, I think it's the average yeah, time. Yeah, I think so. Probably. So if you've listened this far, like, A, thank you. Uh, B, we really do want to hear from you. So if you were like sitting there like, oh, well, what about this biblical theme or this idea? And you got ideas that you think they'd be great board games. Leave us a comment, send us an email, do whatever. Like, um, let's not stop that conversation uh, here. Um, so if you're hearing it and you're like, you know what? I have a great idea. What about this? You know, let's let's talk about it, you know, um, or if you're a designer, just go do it. Just go make that game and go do that thing. So, I mean, that that that's what excites me. Like, that's where it was. Like, just this conversation alone brought it back to that first shall be last. And I was like, that's it. And you're literally going to call the game the first shall be last. And then using the verse, outdoing one another, you know, and, and giving honor and yeah. driving it. But that sparked again from this conversation. And then it turned into now sitting down and actually having mechanics and working through stuff. So it's like... I love that. So, you know, do that. And if you're not a designer and you just have a really cool idea, spit it out, man. Who knows? Um, yes. So totally pumped. But you can find us on all our socials at Christian Board Gamers. Uh, it's ChristianBoardGamers.com, Christian Board Gamers on Instagram, Christian Board Gamers on Facebook. Again, use the group, not the page so much. Um, and, um, Oh, we can even announce this. We have uh, also partnered um, with the Gaming Caravan, which is really, really exciting as well. So really, really pumped about all that and just the things that God is doing on the back end. It's really neat. So totally, totally stoked. So, Ray, as is all the Pop Rocks are wearing off, the Pop Pebbles, they're start, I'm starting to be like, <laughs> yes. hey, you know what? If you would have had Pop Rocks, like, you would have had about another 30 minutes. But Pop Pebbles, they right, kind of right. out Right, right. But Pop Pebbles, sooner. they yeah. Did, yeah, they cut out a little <laughs> earlier than uh, Dollar, than dollar Store brand, yeah. That. Yeah, hitting that sugar crash. <laughs> so, sorry, right, though. Um, but Ray, you got any final thoughts, any words of wisdom and or profoundness that you want to drop on the dizzy? Uh, I just kind of reiterate what you just <laughs> said, man, about um, I'm just thankful for what God is doing. I'm thankful for how he created each one of us uniquely, but also in his likeness and image and with the creativity. We all have uh, within us his spirit of creativity. And if that's something that you do, man, do it to the best that you can and make it happen. Don't let anybody discourage you. No doubt. Amen. Cool. So, yeah, hit us up on the socials again. Christian board gamers everywhere, everywhere except for like x we're not on twitter or any of that kind of stuff just instagram facebook website podcast spotify youtube all those kind of places so hit us up but as always uh we will leave with matthew five sixteen. let your light shine before others in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven until next time y'all have a wonderful and blessed week peace peace